Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. It's Liquid here. And a couple weeks ago on March the 10th, I had about $656,000 worth of stocks in my investment account, which I hold both US and Canadian stocks. But since then, over the last two weeks, I have sold about $124,000 worth of stocks. So here's what my account looks like right now. The total US and Canadian stocks combined is just 541. So in today's video, I'm going to explain why I'm more cautious on the market going forward, why I've taken some risk off the table, and what I expect the market to do in the upcoming months. The main reason I've sold is because I think the market is probably going to head lower in the next coming one or two months. And there's a couple reasons for that. This is the S&P 500 daily chart. If I go to the weekly chart, we can get rid of some of the noise. Starting from a larger perspective, as we all know, last year, there was this major downward trend that the market was in. It has since broken out of that at the beginning of the year. And I mentioned in the previous video that investors should wait for a bounce off of the top of this channel. It looks like we didn't really get it because although we had a couple weeks of just hanging around the top of the channel, it came back into it. The previous week, it still closed within it. And then this last week, it broke out of it again. However, the breakout is not very convincing because you can see that wick on the top there. And that means it was rejected sometime during the week and it ended lower. So on a smaller scale, this is the kind of channel that we're looking at right now. I'm going to make this a different color. So unless the market can go past the top of this channel, I'm not convinced that we have broken out of this bear market yet. Now, the lows of the bear market could be in back in October, but that doesn't mean we can't head lower from here. Because if I do a measured move from the recent top to the recent bottom, and if that were to happen again, then we're looking at about 3650 is where the market could head to if it continues to get rejected by the top of this smaller channel. Also, if I turn on the 200 day moving average, which is this black line. A lot of investors and traders use this as a gauge to determine what the overall trend of the market is doing. And it's pretty much been going down over the last several months, and it's kind of flattening right now, but it's still not going up. Like I wouldn't say that has curled up yet. It's not like the last time it went down and then started curling up. Like this would be a pretty bullish signal because you have the stock market bouncing off of the 200 day simple moving average pretty convincingly and the black line is pointing upwards or as right now it's a little bit hard to say the black line is still trending kind of down or flat plus on the weekly chart there are more negative indicators than positive in tradingview.com i can click on more technicals and change the time period to one week and you can see that overall if you include all of the oscillators and the moving averages we have 10 sell signals and six buy signals so overall, that's a negative outlook for the market on a weekly basis, which basically means over the next two or three months. Another reason I'm sort of bearish medium term on the market is because in the last FOMC meeting this past week, Jerome Powell actually said that they are close to the terminal Fed funds rate, which means interest rates are not going to go much higher than where they are right now, about 5%. Most Fed members think that the highest interest rates will go to, at least for this year, is going to be between 5 and 5.25%. And then next year in 2024, interest rates should drop. So that means we're probably near a Fed pivot. However, when that has happened in the past and the Federal Reserve started to cut rates, oftentimes the stock market fell more after the start of the first rate cut. And that's not because the rate cut is what caused stock markets to fall, but it's more likely that something broke in the economy. Maybe there's a banking crisis or unemployment is really high. People are losing jobs. Entire sectors might be shut down. So due to some kind of shock in the system, the Federal Reserve has to cut rates. But that also coincides with the stock market doing poorly because those economic problems will weigh on company earnings, which is how the stock market is ultimately valued. The Fed's interest rate is down here with the blue line is and since the 1980s it's been slowly going down with little bumps along the way and right now we're over here 2023 we're up at about five percent judging by historical patterns i think over the next one or two years we are going to see a cut in the interest rate and at least over the last three times when that's happened the s p 500 fell quite a bit so that is another reason why i'm cautious and it makes sense for me to take a little bit of risk off the table and I'm continuing to sell into rallies, meaning if there's a rally like this or like this one over here, then I'm going to use that strength and sell more of my stocks. 
That's why if you look at my portfolio right now, this is currently what I have for my options, a lot of covered calls. So I have over 100 shares of Adobe, and I will sell my shares if the stock finishes above 385 by the end of this upcoming week. And currently the stock is at about 375. So normally when I'm bullish on the market, I would be selling more puts, but now I have a lot of calls as well. Then here's my Google call that if you saw my tweet on Twitter, uh, you'll know that this was rolled over from the previous week to March 31st. So by selling some stocks now, it will give me an opportunity to buy back into the market when potentially I can get in at a better price. The other thing is because I'm currently using margin loan, by selling stocks, I can reduce the amount of margin that I'm currently holding. So that's going to reduce my interest expenses. And because interest rates are higher now than before, for US dollars, I'm paying 6.3%. For my Canadian balance, I'm paying 56 It's not as worth it for me to hold negative cash now as it was like a year ago. However, I'm not going like 100% in cash. I'm just selling about 15 or 20% and keeping an eye on what the market is doing. So if I'm wrong and we just bounce off of this green line and the market just continues going higher and we make new highs, then I would probably get back in once the black line has turned and the market is convincingly above the 200 moving average, which will probably be somewhere like over here or over here, which means I will have missed out on some gains, but I'm okay with that. And then the last thing I just want to point out is the VIX. In a previous video, I mentioned one of Charlie's tweet, which said that if you followed a simple rule throughout all of last year, you would have made a lot of money. And that is when the VIX is low at around 20, the stock market tends to be overbought. So you want to sell when the VIX comes down here. And then when the VIX goes up to 30, that's when you can buy the dip and you buy the stock market. So that was a great strategy all of last year. And even into this year, it still works because at the end of January, you can see the VIX was down here below 20. So using this indicator, that would have been a great time to sell on strength. So you would sell the S&P 500 over here. And then at the, it looks like the 13th of March is when the VIX spiked over 30. So at this time you would buy into the market because the VIX is high, which means the stock market tends to be relatively low. And if I take a look at the S&P 500, the end of January would be about here. So this would have been a great time to sell as the stock market was overvalued. And then on March 13th, this would have been a great time to buy. And then you would have uh, ridden the stock market up over the last couple of weeks. So the VIX indicator still works even this year, so far at least. And that is another reason why I am just selling a little bit of my stock because the VIX has come down and touched the 20 line again just this past week. If I go to the daily chart, we can see which day it did that. So that was a Thursday and Wednesday. And the VIX also seems to have this kind of support line down here. So if it follows this, then the next logical point it would touch next is up here at 30 again. And we all know what happens when the VIX goes up, the stock market is likely to go down. So that's why in the next two to three months, I am expecting more downward pressure on the stock market. However, that being said, over the next three or four quarters, like by the end of this year, I do expect the S&P 500 to be higher than now. So I am planning to buy back into the market. It's just I think there's going to be a dip before the next real rally begins. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully that helps you out with making your own investment decisions. Good luck with your finances and I'll talk to you in the next one.